Hey guys and welcome back to Axange RC. Today I will be reviewing the new MyFly Dream Nimbus Twin Tractor FPV plane. But before we get to the flying bit, I want to say a few words about the build and to clarify some, some things about the Banggood version of the plane. A few people, me included, did get their Nimbuses from the first round of pre-orders from Banggood and unlike me, some people expressed concerns about the shipping state of the plane and the control surface hinges and about the model they got not being the same as the one in the promotional video and so on and so on. So let me start by saying this, at this point in the hobby it should be painfully clear that some manufacturers prefer to have different versions of the same plane to suit different purposes. What was shown in the promotional video was the mapping version of the Nimbus which would be more expensive and has not yet been released. What Banggood is selling is the FPV version of the plane. And as far as I'm concerned, I got exactly what I expected to get and can't find much to complain about. So I hardly see the need for some people to bash on Charles. This is the guy making the Nimbus. Just because they jumped the gun and got the first thing out there in the market and it turned out not to be what they expected. I'm also not defending Charles entirely. He could have mentioned ahead of time that there will be a few versions of this plane and also which one will be released first would have spared a lot of confusion and bad mouthing. Moving on, yes, the lack of proper hinges on a plane that has a max flying weight of 5 kilograms is a concern, but since I install hinges on all new planes I get, for me this is more of a nuisance than a deal breaker, and the argument that the stock foam hinges are stiff and warp the control surfaces when the servo moves them is not really a valid one when you put proper hinges on. However, this kit does cost $250, which is not a small amount of money, and I really don't see how a few proper hinges here and there can bump up the manufacturing cost enough to make this too expensive. And also, keep this in mind, compared to the EVE 2000, this plane can be considered cheap because for a slightly higher price, you get the EVE totally disassembled and with absolutely no electronics and in comparison with the Nimbus you get a plane that is 95% assembled and you only have to glue the tail on and install some hinges and you also get the servos with the kit and the power distribution board with a 5 volt 3 amp and a 12 volt 3 amp BEX so in effect you get a lot more for your money going with the Nimbus than you do going with the EVE 2000 the fact that the distribution board is worthless is another matter entirely and I will get to that. As for the shipping state of the plane, true, the box was squashed, but surprisingly the plane was okay. Of course there were a few dings here and there, but I recently came to the realization that I do more damage to the plane while handling it during the build process and later when transporting it. So I can't really complain for a few dents in the form that I would have caused anyway in a few days. But I have to say this though, the quality of the plane, the parts, the foam itself, it all feels sturdy, very solid and of high quality. Just by looking at the plane I can tell you that a lot of work has gone into it and a lot of thought as well. And given it comes with servos and almost fully assembled, I'd say it's pretty cheap when you compare it to... Uh, all the competition out there where you still don't get hinged control surfaces but you also don't get so much plastic parts that make assembly and disassembly so quick and easy and you certainly don't get it almost assembled but what you do get is a very similar if not higher price tag true the plastic parts and solid foam do make this frame a bit heavier than the XUAV clouds for instance but it's all worth it if you're looking for the added rigidity and don't want to have to reinforce the factory design. Also, despite the weight, the flight time is not bad at all and a lithium ion pack would really make this one a serious duration contender, but more on that later. So, choosing not to be bothered by the hinges and the shipping dents, I got to work. First, I glued on the tail bits, making sure to wire some additional cables back there for the radio receiver and possibly a camera in the future. I then proceeded to install proper hinges and guess what? The control surfaces no longer warp when the servo moves them because the hinges allow free movement of the surface. And finally, what was left 
was some wiring and soldering and then some rewiring due to the servo interference into the video signal and then there was the battery and the motors from the Nimbus power pack which I had to get from my flight dream directly since Banggood does not have it for sale separately and at the time I was ordering the Nimbus they only had the kit version but not the plug and play one and so after a bit more fiddling and tinkering the plane was ready for action I was not able to balance it with the 6.6 .6 amp 6s batteries I use uh, to fly the clouds but the 12 amp 6s one from the EVE 2000 was spot on and so finally we get to the maiden flight of the new My Flight Dream Nimbus airplane but first the assembly in all honesty I can say that this is probably the quickest and easiest plane to assemble especially when you consider the size I'd say it's even easier than the uh, XKA1200 and there are no tools required other than your two hands after takeoff, it did need some up trim on the elevator to make it fly level, but other than that, it was perfect. And just by looking at it from the ground, you could tell that the plane's construction is very rigid. Uh, it just looks solid in the air. My only regret is putting that pan tilt mount up front. Turns out the servos are complete crap once the plane is in the air. So I removed the mount for the next day's flights. I would actually jump to that now because the video from the onboard camera is actually watchable. So as is my custom after trimming the plane and getting a feel for it, I immediately tested the stall characteristics, both going with the wind and going against the wind, and quickly found out that no matter which way you're going, uh, at least at the 3.8 kilograms all up weight mine was at with the 12 amp 6s battery, this plane will just not tip stall. Zero throttle and some up elevator resulted in it parachuting down and that is in manual mode. Only time when it tried to dip a wing but recovered immediately after that was when I used full up elevator with zero throttle going downwind. Once I turned the stabilization on it felt like nothing can make this even slightly dip a wing. Yes it would wobble a bit but it would just parachute down in a very calm manner. This was actually a little surprising to me because at 3.8 kilograms the Nimbus is about 1 kilogram heavier than the clouds and with a slightly shorter wingspan although its wing cord is actually slightly bigger than even the Skywalker EVE 2000. By most accounts it would appear this plane is really well designed and this means improved safety in all flying conditions as long as the CG is correct as always. So really impressive stall characteristics and this really reinforced my trust in the plane. So I may just use it for some long range fun at some point when I sort out the gear on it. In terms of flight characteristics, after the trimming was done, the plane felt really nice in the air and actually it uh, could keep a straight line, which was nice. Initially I did have it balanced exactly at the CG point, which is 10 centimeters from the leading edge, so it was neutral, but it was a bit wobbly when there were gusts of wind, so I moved the battery one centimeter forward and it was very solid after that. And speaking of the CG, I not surprisingly did not receive the user manual from Banggood, so I actually had to get it from My Flight Dream as well, and I will put a link to it in the description below. So, with trims and CG sorted, it was time to see how long the Nimbus would fly. I set up a short mission and let the plane just repeat it over and over, and actually it did take a while for it to get through that 12 amp battery. Turns out the 510 kV motors that came from My Flight Dream are really efficient with the supplied 10 by 6 props and the plane was able to achieve 100 minutes of flight time using up only 10 amps out of the 12 in the battery. Despite its shorter wingspan compared to the EVE 2000 it actually flew for longer and if I'm to run the battery completely flat it should get pretty close to 2 hours which for me is pretty impressive. In those 100 minutes of flight time it was able to cover 85 kilometers which is less than what the EVE 2000 did in 90 minutes 
which means that the Nimbus was flying a bit slower, which is actually good at this time because I was able to more easily chase it with my Phantom for some nice aerial shots. I will have to put on some 10x7 props just like on the Skywalker and see how that will change the endurance results. The 12 amp 6S battery I'm using now weighs around 1.5 kilograms. So if I am to make a lithium ion pack of the same weight, it would come out to 6S5P when using 18650 cells. And depending on the model, it could be as high as 17 amps. A rough calculation shows that such a pack would potentially get me very close to 3 hours. If I also decide to use up the remaining 1.2 kilograms till the Nimbus's max flying weight of 5 kilograms with more battery capacity, uh, I would almost double that 17 amp pack, so we should be looking at flight times of over 4 hours and possibly closer to 5. But that would also depend on how the flight efficiency would change with the added weight. But enough about the endurance, when building the Nimbus I installed an FSKY X8R receiver and mounted the antennas the same way as the L9Rs on my XUAV clouds to see if that placement will get me a good distance with this receiver as well. While the endurance test was running I made a quick distance test and was able to get out to 6.2 kilometers before the Tarani started complaining that the signal was getting low, at which point I turned back, but next time around I will push it to its max limit just to see where that is. Although the endurance test showed pretty clearly that no out of the box 2.4 GHz system could match up to the plane's battery range, so I'll have to see what I will put on it to be able to make full use of that. And now I have to mention my disappointment with the Nimbus's distribution board, even though it makes powering stuff very convenient as it has all the necessary regulators, the servo and ESC lines are not separated from the side that powers the video system. The servos are a big problem for video systems and that was apparent immediately after my initial wiring so I added an external uh, regulator to power the servos and that solved that issue. However, during flight I could see interference from the ESCs in the video feed although not a lot, it was there nonetheless and it would go away only when I throttled down. Such a thing would definitely limit the range on the video system and I will have to rewire the plane again to bypass the distribution board but be assured that I will do my best to prepare the Nimbus for long range endeavors with over 100 minutes of flight time and those efficient motors which actually are capable of making it go almost vertically if needed this would make an amazing cloud chaser I am not giving up on the XUAV clouds, which is my favorite all-around plane at this time, but the Nimbus has some serious potential and is a valid contender, despite the higher weight. So we will see what the future holds for this one, but so far I'm pretty happy with its quality and flight characteristics, and video and radio range should be able to match the battery endurance at some point, so make sure you stay tuned for the future updates I will do on the Nimbus. And with this, it is time to conclude this review. I hope you have found it useful when making a decision on the Nimbus. And if that is so, please give it a thumbs up, share it. And if you haven't already, feel invited to subscribe to my channel. If you're planning to purchase any of the items featured in this video, I'd appreciate the support if you do so via the links in the description below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.